Hello, in this quick tips and tricks video we're gonna take a look at hamming distance and we're gonna try three different approaches, one with a loop, one with a set and with a zip function. If you don't know what hamming distance is, here's the definition from Wikipedia and some examples there too. Basically we have two strings of equal length and this is important because if they're not equal length we need to use a different algorithm. But in our case it's hamming distance, we can have two equal length strings and we are going to loop through two strings at the same time and we're going to compare characters. So if they are not the same, we're going to accumulate that Hamming distance value. So the result of the Hamming distance function is the sum of all the mismatches between two strings. Okay? So we're going to start by creating a file called h underscore distance. So here's our new file. And the first thing we need to do is create two test strings. So we're going to call them DNA string 1 and 2. And the difference between them is actually four. We're going to use these short strings uh, so it's easier for us to test. So the first difference is A and T here. The other difference is here. So it's two, three, and four. Okay, so we know the hamming distance, the difference between these two strings is four. Now let's write our first function with a loop. So the first approach is going to be a very naive and simple loop approach. This is probably what um, everyone who just starts learning Python looks at this problem and they say, okay, I'm just gonna loop through one of the strings length because they're equal length, so that's easy. And I'm just gonna compare the character at the position, okay? And if there's a difference, if they're not equals, I'm going to add one to my Hamming distance. So we just start by creating Hamming distance equals to zero and we are using this range length and the loop will loop through 12 characters because if we're gonna select this we can see that it's the length 12 okay and it's going to take this position and it is an integer okay so the range will return an integer so 0 1 2 3 so forth until the 12 number 12 okay so we're passing these two strings into it here and we're just checking is the character from the first string at the position, let's say zero, we're gonna start from zero, equals, meaning the same character in the string two at the same position. If it is not, we're going to add one. If it is, we're just gonna skip that part, we're gonna go back to for loop, this is going to be one, then we go back to string one, we're checking for character at position one, in string one, in string two, and so on. Okay, so now we're gonna quickly test our code, at the bottom here of the file, so the testing the code here, so loop hamming distance, and we're calling this function we just created, here it is, hd, meaning hamming distance loop, and we're passing our two test strings here, and as we know, result should be 4. Let's quickly run that, and we can see it is 4. So here you might be wondering what and equals this is. It's one of the parameters that print function accepts, that tells it how to end a string. So here we are saying, can you print this line here, which is loop hamming distance double colon, and do not do a new line. Okay, so let's try actually removing this and see what is going to happen. We're printing this out, it says loop hamming distance, and then number four is actually on the new line. We're going to return that part here again, and now let's run it, and you can see it says hamming distance Four on the same line. Let's actually try doing something like that quickly. Let's see what's gonna happen. It says Hamming distance minus four. So when we're saying end equals single quotes here, we're just saying please do not do new line character because we want to see number four that this function returns on the same line, okay? So now this is a very easy and naive approach again and we're checking character zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. So again, at position three, we can see they are different and we're going to use this increment here. Okay, so another approach to this function could be using sets. So here's the function, we're gonna call it hd set, Hamming distance set, and it accepts two strings the same way as the loop version, and it converts both strings that it accepts into sets. This might be a little bit harder to read than this, because here we have this kind of procedural approach, step by step, and it's easy to understand what's happening. 
If you're not uh, used to using sets, for example, with list comprehensions and some enumerate function, it might be a little bit harder to read. But what we can do, we can try looking inside one of these and let's see what is in it. And always, if you're not sure what is happening and what is being stored in the variable, the best way is just use print statement or use a debugger to look inside and see what is being stored. So let's use a for loop to visualize one of these sets we have created. Okay, let's just print x, of course. And we need to call this function because it's not being called anywhere. And we're going to create this another quick thing here. We're going to say set hamming distance no new line character, having distance set, and we're passing the same strings. Let's run this. We are of course gonna get the result printed four from this return and four from this return. And let's just print it out. And I'm gonna remove this for now because we don't need a new line. So here it is. So loop hamming distance is four and the set hamming distance is four as well. But again, we are looking into this set here. So this list of tuples here, is being generated by this line 15. So we have this enumerate function and we're passing our string, first string in this case, and we are creating this tuple right here. So basically enumerate will return our character and an index of that character in that string, and we're just creating a tuple out of it. Of course, sets are not ordered, so every time we're gonna run this, it's probably gonna be in a different order. Let's just quickly run this. Okay, so the 10 is number one now, then the nine is number one. Okay, so set is not really ordered. We can easily order it by passing sorted. Okay, so now we can see what is being stored in nucleotide set one. Let's visualize a bit more. Let's actually see those two lists side by side sorted and it will be very easy to see how we compare them, how we do this difference operation here. So instead of this, we're gonna do, we're gonna use a length of one of them because again, they are the same length should be easy. So we're going to use a function called sorted and we're going to pass our first set. So nucleotide set one and it is going to return a list that is sorted and we want to have them side by side so we're going to do the same for the other list. And of course we're going to need to specify an index which is x in this case, right? So we're going to go from 0 to 12 because that's the length of the strings as we know and we're going to go zero, zero, one, one. Let's see them side by side now. And here they are. We can see that the first one doesn't match. So at position zero, there's T and there's A. So that's a mismatch. That's the match, match, mismatch, and so on. And of course it will count four. So here's the kind of way of visualizing what is happening if you're not sure, if you're gonna copy a code from uh, some website and it does kind of work, you can always just run some printouts on that code or use a debugger and see what is being stored in your variables. Okay, so let's get rid of this debug information here and you can see it's just three lines of code. In this case, we are using a difference uh, method from the set. So we have the set number one and then we have a set number two and we are calling a method difference and what difference will return, it will return a list of tuples that are different. Um, we can actually visualize that too. So let's actually print this out. Now let's try running this and so line 18 will return this and line 20 will of course return the length. So now we can visualize what difference returns to us and the other cool thing is when we just debug it this way with a print we can see that it returns the difference function, returns a curly brackets here meaning it returns a set and in this case it's a set of tuples, four tuples. And we of course can just run the length on this set of tuples and it will return number four. Now we're gonna get rid of this debug function again. Okay, so now we have two ways of doing this, a loop and a set. Now we're gonna take a look at the zip version. So the last solution is going to use a zip. We're going to write this by hand, line by line, and we're gonna take a look inside of variables to see what zip actually returns. So let's create our first variable. We're gonna call it zipped DNA. And we're going to call our zip function, okay? And we are going to pass our strings to it. String number one and string number two. And let's add a print statement so we can actually call this function. Now, zip DNA. What we can do, we can just try printing the zip DNA by itself like that. And let's see what it will print out. 
it creates a zip object. Now, what we can try doing is we can try using for loop for x in, again, this is just for demonstration purposes, zipped DNA, and let's print out x instead of zipped DNA. Okay. And before we run it, let's actually remove a new line character as well here. So here is the contents of this zipped DNA variable. So it seems to be creating this list of tuples for us, where it stores the first character of a first string and the first character of a second string, second character, third character, and so on. Okay, so now what we can do, we can loop through that and actually compare these characters and see if they are different, then we're going to accumulate our Hamming distance, the same way we accumulated it here. Okay. So now that we can visually see what is being stored in this zipped DNA variable, let's use a list comprehension to loop through it and compare character by character and then kind of accumulate the differences, the mismatches. We are going to get rid of that and let's create a Hamming distance and we're going to say N1, which is nucleotide 1 and nucleotide 2 because we are scanning by nucleotide for N1 and 2 in our zipped DNA. Okay, and let's now look at what is being returned at this stage. So let's just print out H distance. So we can see that it returns the whole set of characters, but we are interested in the differences, the mismatches between string one and string two, which should be a four tuples. So we can add a small piece of logic right here. We can do if n1 nucleotide one is not equals to nucleotide 2, which is also if nucleotide at position 0 is not equals a nucleotide of a string 2 at position 0, then return a tuple. So now we can try running it again, and we have only the mismatched tuples here, okay? And we can actually clearly see they're mismatching. And of course, the logical thing now is just return a length of Hamming distance. So let's print out len and we have our length because we know it's four tuples. Okay, now we can combine this all into one line and return that line. Let's actually do this, return. We're going to use this list comprehension. We're gonna put it in here. Instead of zip DNA, we can use this. So we're gonna copy, paste it in here. And of course we need to return a length of that list. We can get rid of all of this stuff right now here. And we have just one line of code. Let's try running it. But before we do our final run, let's actually return these no new line characters. And here we are. We have a loop approach, set approach, and a zip approach. Okay, so this is it for this quick tips and tricks video. If you liked it, make sure to thumbs up. And if you find a more elegant solution than what we've discussed in this video, please make sure to share it with everyone in the comments section below, okay? So until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.